When the moon turns red and casts its eerie glow over the sea, sailors whisper of a ship lost to time, cursed to sail the waters for eternity. The legend of Captain Elijah Blood is known to every soul who dares sail the seas. Once, he was the most feared pirate on the high seas. His greed for power was matched only by his ruthlessness, but it was his lust for, for immortality that sealed his fate. Long ago, Blood made a deal with dark forces. He was promised eternal life in exchange for his soul, a bargain that made him invincible in battle. His enemies fell before him, and his ship, the Crimson Fury, symbolized terror across the oceans. But dark magic always comes with a price. In his final battle, with victory in sight, the sea itself turned against him. A blood moon rose, and his ship was swallowed by a storm, dragging it beneath the waves. Yet, it did not sink. Instead, it was cursed to sail the seas forever, reappearing only when the blood moon rises. Captain Blood and his crew were bound to the ship, unable to die, but unable to live. Cursed to sail until the captain could find a soul willing to take his place. For years the ship has haunted the oceans, its ghostly sails rising only on the nights of the Blood Moon. Some say it searches for sailors, desperate or foolish enough to make a deal with the cursed captain. On those nights, when the moon burns red and the sea glows like blood, Captain Elijah Blood seeks a new soul to take his place. And tonight, the blood moon has risen. On the horizon, silhouetted by the crimson light of the moon, the shadow of a ship appears. Its sails, once proud and black, now tattered and glowing faintly in the eerie red light, drift closer to a group of sailors who have unknowingly crossed its path. The sea was calm, almost unnaturally still, as the sailors aboard the Starfinder gazed up at the blood-red moon hanging low in the sky. It bathed everything in a sinister crimson light, turning the ocean into a dark, reflective mirror. Captain Rees squinted into the distance his brow furrowing as a shadow began to materialize on the horizon. What is that? One of the crewmen muttered, pointing toward the strange shape. The silhouette of a ship slowly emerged, its tattered sails catching the light of the blood moon. It was unlike any ship they had ever seen, a ghostly presence that sent a chill through the air. The sails fluttered, though there was no wind, and the hull seemed impossibly old. Yet it floated gracefully over the water, moving steadily toward them. Captain Reese swallowed hard. That... that's not possible, he whispered. But there it was, closing the distance between them. The ship was massive, its once grand form now decrepit and decayed. The name on the hull, barely visible beneath layers of seaweed and salt, sent shivers down the spines of the crew. The Crimson Fury. The sailors whispered among themselves, exchanging nervous glances. They had heard the legends, stories of a cursed ship that appeared under the blood moon captained by a man who had sold his soul to dark forces. But those were just tales told in taverns, meant to scare newcomers and keep them in line. Yet here it was, the legendary ship sailing toward them as if pulled by an invisible force. The air grew colder and a thick mist began to rise from the water, swirling around the Starfinder, enveloping it in a ghostly fog. We should turn back, one of the crew members said, his voice trembling, but it was too late. The cursed ship had drawn too close, and the sailors aboard the Starfinder could only watch in horror as the Crimson Fury came to a halt, its ghostly sails flapping soundlessly in the eerie moonlight. Without warning, a gangplank extended from the cursed ship, bridging the gap between the two vessels. The crew of the Starfinder stood frozen, unable to move as if the very air around them had become thick with dread. Captain, one of the men whispered, his voice barely audible. 
What do we do? Captain Reese took a deep breath, staling himself. We board, he said, his voice grim, and pray we make it off alive. The gangplank uh, creaked under their weight as Captain Reese and his crew cautiously crossed over to the Crimson Fury. The air felt heavier with each step, thick with something they couldn't quite explain. An ancient, unnatural force that seemed to be pulling them deeper into its grasp. The blood moon loomed overhead, casting an eerie red light across the ship's decayed deck. The ship's wood groaned beneath them as they set foot on the ghostly vessel. Its planks cracked and damp with centuries of sea mist. Around them, the masts stood tall but skeletal, their ropes frayed and brittle, snapping in the windless air. There was no sound but the soft creaking of the ship, no sign of life, or so they thought. From the shadows, a figure emerged. At first, it was hard to see through the thick, swirling fog that covered the deck. But then the figure stepped forward. His face was pale, almost translucent, his eyes hollow and filled with the weight of centuries of suffering. He wore what was once a fine pirate's coat, now ragged and torn, hanging loosely over his skeletal frame. Welcome, the ghostly pirate rasped, his voice low and hollow, to the crimson fury. The crew froze in place, fear rippling through them. Captain Reese drew his sword, though he knew it was a little use against whatever this was. What do you want? He demanded, his voice shaking. The pirate tilted his head, a twisted smile forming on his lips. It's not what I want, he said, stepping closer. It's what the captain wants. More figures appeared from the mist, their gaunt faces twisted in torment. They were the crew of the Crimson Fury, damned souls trapped in eternal servitude to Captain Elijah Blood. Their eyes glowed faintly in the red moonlight, and their movements were slow, but deliberate. Each of them carried the weight of centuries on their ghostly shoulders, their mouths opening as if to scream, but no sound escaped. The crew of the Starfinder backed away, but there was nowhere to run. The cursed sailors moved silently surrounding them, their empty gazes fixed on the living intruders. Suddenly, a loud, booming voice echoed across the deck, freezing everyone in place. Enough. The ghostly crew stopped in their tracks, parting as a tall figure emerged from the fog. Captain Elijah Blood himself stepped forward, his long coat billowing out behind him. His face was a grotesque mix of decayed flesh and bone, his eyes burning with a dark, sinister light. You've come aboard my ship, he said, his voice deep and commanding. Now you must pay the price. Reese stood tall, trying to mask the fear in his heart. We didn't come here by choice, he said, his voice trembling slightly. We were drawn here by the moon, by you. Captain Blood chuckled, a hollow, menacing sound. Aye, the Blood Moon always brings those looking for treasure, for adventure, he said, slowly pacing toward them. But no one leaves without making a choice. Reese frowned. What choice? The captain's eyes gleamed with dark intent. You either join my crew or take my place. The crew of the Starfinder looked at one another in horror. The cursed captain's meaning was clear. Someone had to stay behind, bound to the ship for eternity, or they would all be damned. A thick silence fell over the deck, broken only by the faint creaking of the Crimson Fury as it drifted beneath the Blood Moon's glow. The crew of the Starfinder stared at Captain Elijah Blood, the weight of his ultimatum sinking in like the icy mist that clung to the ship. Chose, the captain said, his voice low and dangerous. One of you must stay. Reese felt his heart pounding in his chest as he looked at his men. They were just sailors, ordinary men, not warriors, not heroes. Fear filled their eyes, and he could feel the panic rising. 
His mind raced, searching for a way out, but there was none. The cursed crew closed in, watching them, waiting for their decision. I'll do it, one of the crew members muttered, his voice shaky but resolved. Reese turned sharply, locking eyes with the man who had spoken, Thomas, one of the younger sailors. His face was pale and his hands trembled, but there was a strange calmness in his expression, as if he had already made peace with his fate. No, you won't, Reese said, stepping forward. None of us will. Captain Blood's lips curled into a smile. It's not a choice you can refuse, Captain. The curse demands a soul. And if none of you take my place, you'll all join my crew. Reese clenched his fists, rage and fear swirling within him. He had led his men into this unknowingly, but that didn't make it any less his responsibility. His thoughts raced. If he could stall for time, if he could find a way to break the curse. But Captain Blood was growing impatient. Choose, he commanded, his voice booming across the deck. The red light of the blood moon seemed to pulse in the sky, casting an eerie glow on the ship. Rhys knew there was no escaping this fate, but if it came down to sacrificing one man to save the rest... Captain, let me do it, Thomas said, his voice firmer now. I don't have much waiting for me back home. You do. Rhys's stomach churned. Could he live with this decision? Could he let one of his men make the ultimate sacrifice? Before he could answer, Captain Blood stepped closer, his bony hand reaching out. Time's up, Captain. The curse must be fulfilled. Reese's breath caught in his throat as Captain Blood's skeletal hand reached out, the air around it turning icy cold. The crew of the Starfinder stood frozen, unable to tear their eyes away from the terrifying figure of the cursed captain. Thomas stepped forward, his face pale but determined. I'll do it, he said, his voice steady. I'll take your place. Captain Blood's eyes gleamed with a malevolent light as he turned his gaze toward the young sailor. Brave, he said, his voice dripping with dark amusement. But are you sure, lad? Eternity is a long time to spend in the dark. Thomas swallowed hard but nodded. It's better than watching my mates die. Before anyone could react, Captain Reese grabbed Thomas's arm. No, Reese shouted, you don't have to do this. Thomas shook his head, pulling his arm free. It's the only way, Captain. If I don't, we all go down with the ship. Captain Blood watched the exchange with a cruel smile on his decaying lips. Time's wasting, gentlemen, he said, his voice a low growl. Make your choice. Reese felt helpless as he looked at his crew, his heart heavy with the weight of the decision. He knew he couldn't stop Thomas, but he couldn't bring himself to let him go either. Thomas took a deep breath and stepped toward Captain Blood. The cursed captain's hand hovered above his shoulder, ready to complete the deal. But before the final touch, Captain Reese made his move. I'll take his place, Reese said, stepping forward with a sudden burst of courage. Let him go. I'll be the one to stay. The crew gasped, and Thomas's eyes widened in shock. Captain, no! He shouted, trying to pull Reese back. But Reese stood firm. Captain Blood tilted his head, his hollow eyes narrowing as he studied Reese. A noble offer, he said, his voice dripping with mockery. But the choice was already made. Reese clenched his fists. I'm the captain. It's my responsibility. For a long moment, Captain Blood said nothing. Then, with a slow, deliberate movement, he withdrew his hand. Very well, he said, his voice a whisper on the wind. The captain stays. Without warning, the cursed crew moved forward, their ghostly hands closing around Reese, pulling him toward the heart of the Crimson Fury. His skin grew cold, his breath shallow, as the curse began to take hold. Captain, Thomas shouted, trying to reach him, but the mist thickened, pushing him and the rest of the crew back toward the Starfinder. As Reese was pulled deeper into the fog, his last words echoed across the deck. 
take the ship and go, he said, his voice faint but clear. Get out of here before it's too late. The crew, their hearts heavy, obeyed. They scrambled back onto the Starfinder, pulling up the gangplank just as the blood moon began to fade. The ship slowly drifting back into the mist. Captain Blood watched in silence as the Starfinder sailed away, his cold, ghostly eyes locked on the horizon. And then, as the last light of the blood moon flickered out, he turned to Reese, now standing at his side, his face pale and haunted. Welcome to eternity, Captain Blood said with a twisted grin. Let's sail. <laughs>